Hi, my name is Alwanza. I was a lesbian, and this is my testimony. Hi, guys. It's Alwanza, and I am coming to you to answer some questions about me, my past, about being a homosexual, being delivered from it, my deliverance process, um, my story. So this is me. I am sitting here relaxing, enjoying the evening as the sun set and um, moving forward, doing things, talking with God and sitting on my testimonies and my deliverances and how, you know, how good God is and what he's brought me through. So. Um, if you are just happened upon me because of the title of this about being um, about homosexuality, then my name is Alwanza. You can find me socializing all over social media at Alwanza and um, visit my site alwanzabrooks.com. So let's get started. For my beginning, was I, I was, I think my first female relation relationship was um oh my goodness just remembering I totally forgot about some of this stuff so um even my the way I decided to start this thing I have like a slew of questions here that I totally forgot about the beginning okay so the beginning was I born gay no I wasn't born gay that's not my story. Now, this is my story, y'all. Let me lay that down right now. Two minutes into this thing. This is my story, my deliverance, my process, my moments with God. This is my story. If someone else is delivered another way, went another way, you don't agree. Okay, we have our opinions. We have our own stories. We have our own journeys. This is mine. How I feel. This is my channel. My channel. This is my thoughts this is my journey so if you don't like it disclaimer Bible boo okay this is my story if it helps you by all means leave a comment thank you I'd love to hear them if it doesn't share it with somebody who it might but this is my story yours may not be like mine okay got that out the way so let's start from the beginning was I born gay no um, I'm gonna get to it but my but my as I think back and the things that I've been through in life stem from rejection and um, I'll get to that so if you're interested then stay tuned if not toodles all right so now a little more relaxed so my testimony now um my now relationship my my homosexuality didn't start from relationship it started from being uh intro being just in a in a relationship with someone with a guy and being um having a desire just doing more in the relationship and bringing in girls so that's how it started um so the beginning the beginning um before the rejections the beginning before the rejections so um my um first like i'll just say my first experience or whatever it was with when i with a girl i was dating this guy and I was already at this point curious in my life about what it'd be like to be with a woman. So I was already curious. I, the curiosity was um, gotten stronger and stronger and stronger. Then um, I became more and more attracted to women as the curiosity came. And um, I was fueling this curiosity by watching, um, by watching porn, and just uh, which started out as a when I was when I decided to watch porn for myself it just decided um, from um, doing um, just another it's linked to another testimony about when I was a 
um, from prostitution and and things like that, which you know, and then molestations and you know rejection. So those testimonies are coming too, and I'm trying not to overlap them too much because I don't want to get off the subject. But um, my curiosity was fueled by watching porn, and as I um, I was in a relationship with a gentleman who was just as open about sexuality as I was um, wanting to be so um, that's how that went and he uh, introduced me to um, a lot of things that I already wanted to do so he was the he was you know that door was opened and he was just like okay what you want to do next okay what you want to do next so um, and then um, so it's it stemmed from the actual going from there then I began to even though I was then he he brought a girl home one time we were dating shocked me I was not prepared or anything and we we were dating but we had our own place and we had been dating a couple of years by then and he was like uh, come over and I was just like okay so I came over and we were relaxing, chilling or whatever. And then he just said that somebody was coming. And I was just like, now, men, we have been, like, we've been together in a relationship with multiple men. So my mind was along the lines of that. Maybe, you know, another man was coming into the relation, maybe to the bedroom or something. So I wasn't foreign to that. But then the girl, even though we talked about it, he put it out there. I you know took the I jumped on it but then when he brought her home <laughs> I had the process when did you have time to go meet her how long you been knowing her would you I didn't have time to ask no questions it was at night I was at his house in his room she showed up it, it wasn't time for questions I guess I didn't I didn't take the time to ask any because I was just trying to figure out so then you know I don't want to be the one who can't go with the flow and be judged like oh you ruined it for everybody so yes I had a lot of I felt like a lot of pressure on me to perform and do everything that was required of this moment that he's asking for that he's that he's brought us into because I cared about what he was gonna say where instead of caring about how I was feeling and a relationship and this other woman I just totally was like okay however so um the the um we went went through the process and every, you know what happens in the bedroom with everybody doing everything and then afterwards when she was gone and everything he realized he was like I will never do that again because I I saw how you just went into you it was uncomfortable and my uncomfortableness was because it was with a guy I was in a relationship with and I just it just was sprung on me but it wasn't because I wasn't curious and interested and wanted and to have that first experience with someone and I'm and you know it, at that point I was happy I got out the way then that moment just opened up another door to a whole nother life because now it's like I became on the prowl for moving towards what I was attracted to what I liked what I didn't like what I was interested in what type of body shape figure now I was delving all the way over into the world of um, you know uh, LGBT so, um, even though I was in a relationship with him, I just began to look for women. And he even said, you know, you go find one next time. You do it next time then. And I was just like, oh my gosh. But I did. But I never brought them home. I did pursue. I ran up on some aggressive ones that was like, yeah, you know. So, that that um, that was the, the, the first time I've actually experiencing it manifesting hands-on um, then after that I began to pursue then after that every relationship after him my marriage I always had a girl on the side I always had a man a man and a female and I all and then I got to the point where I didn't want to be with a man anymore but I had two kids I had family friends I had people who knew me who know you can't be gay no you can't be the girl so I 
was at the point where I kept a man just for what others would say, how others would feel, and for image purposes. That was it. I didn't want a man. I didn't want one, but Lord knows I had two kids to raise. I had a, ma I had a marriage, and I just, you know, other people saying stuff. So I was influenced by that. And so... Ooh, so that's what I that's why I kept a I kept a man and um, but I was totally not interested I had lost interest I wanted a female a female I wanted because they were soft they were loving they were caring they were um, what I was looking for which I wasn't feeling I was getting from a man and um, it was just cra it was just crazy it was just cray cray it was crazy so as time went on, um, years, 10 years, still in and out female relationships, building relationships with females to the point where they are wanting me to um, leave my husband. And I was just like, I can't. And I just kept thinking about them kids. And I just kept thinking about like, no. and it got to the point where I stopped worrying about what people were going to say. I was worried about them kids. So I was like, okay, I can't do that. Um, and so I end up, when it got to that point with the relationship with the females, I was like, it was time to cut it off. And I actually cut them off, like hardcore, like chop it in half, like communication, everything. Like I just became callous because then I was pushing her away. And then I'll go find another woman and start over and do the newness all over again. Now to my family, it looked like, okay, I just had a best friend that I was always kicking it with, hanging out with, chilling with. But Lord, no, no. Then um, became a riff in my marriage at one point because I was staying out all hours of the night, like staying at her place, like not wanting to go home, like... And then I was like, okay, I can't do this. I can't make him upset or hang out, you know, do stuff like this to him just because I want to be over there, you know. So that's what I considered. So I start, you know, I chop off the relationship before it gets so far. Then, um, then time progressed and then I went to, uh, then I said, okay, I wasn't going to do the females. Then I was just going to just, oh, you know, just have, you know, still married, just, have like another man or something on the side and it was the excitement it was the fun it was the um um the secrets it was uh it was a lot going on like I love the thrill I love the chase I love the lying the hiding the secrets the what you don't know you can't never hurt me and that is part of why I was doing it like as long as I always had something else or a secret or somebody on the side or doing something you don't know about I you could never hurt me so if you was gonna leave me like every other man was if you was gonna leave me like any other person I wanted and couldn't get rejection a I was good I was I was covering myself taking care of myself so I was so I thought so that's why I always had a husband and somebody on the side whether male or female then it got to the point where um, again I didn't want I was just frustrated with relationships because I couldn't keep the female because I couldn't keep her because I got the kids and the husband I couldn't keep her so then I shut down that area of my life then I realized okay the men um, that was becoming painful as well because I'm getting feelings for them and emotional they're getting attached like bruh I can't stay with you like bruh no I got a husband like bruh I got kids remember so then I realized that because of the husband and the kids that I couldn't entertain that lifestyle and that became more painful and that became hurtful and that became just heavy burdensome and so I cut everybody off when I stopped the affairs, the cheating, the women, the men, the quickies, the one night stands, the meet you now, sex with you in five minutes and gone the next day, not knowing who you were. When I stopped doing that all while, <laughs> all while married and relationships, um, I became depressed. I had no outlet. I had nothing. I started drinking. 
I started drinking because um, it was convenient. My husband would drink, and then I started drinking. And then I realized, well, I don't like what he drinks. So then I started drinking other things. And then um, I thought that I was softly or silently or mildly drinking. And that's another testimony. So I don't want to go too far into that about being an alcoholic. I actually had a license to drink if there's such thing. I have one. And... Um, well, no, there's a such thing. So <laughs> anyway, so I don't want to go too much in excess. Another testimony. But I did, um, I'm going to talk about it later. But um, so then I began to outlet another way. And then that, as hard as I was with the sex with the people, I went that strong and hard with the alcohol. Um, and then, y'all, God came in. God came in when I was at I was not at the peak of my alcoholism. Well, I had already had my license, so I couldn't get no more higher than that. So because um, I was the doctor, if I quit, if the doctor told me if I quit drinking that I would die. So I was at that point of dependency. So I was like, okay, so I couldn't. I mean, I was at a peak, and um. Life was. I was drinking all day, every day, drinking uh, every cup, everything. I, and then, so I used to brag like everything I used to drink. We had in the kitchen. You know, you have the the cabinets, and then you have the shelving on top where people usually put vases and seasonings or mason jars and stuff like that. I had alcohol bottles. Like I was saving them, and in one year, I had filled up everything on top, right? And then my son. I, every time I finish something, I tell my son because my children were taller than me. Put it at the top. Put it at the top. Put it. At the top. So anyway, that's gonna be an. I'll save that for later. So, um. Then God stepped in, and when God stepped in, I was um, not, I was drinking, married, two kids, but I did not have a girlfriend at the time, or in a or uh, in a relationship with a dude, I don't think. And um, okay, and then I was just like, I saw this girl at work one day, and she was just so beautiful, and then she disappeared for a couple of months, and due to the um, work I was in that happens people come and go so I was like okay and it was the Navy so people get deployed and stuff like that so I just was you know I was in the medical field uh, medical x-ray tech I was like what where did she go she got the most beautiful woman ever then while I was at work I um, also became best friends with a with a gay guy a homosexual guy so I used to chill over his house and stuff like that and um, to get away from how the house I used to Oh, go stay over his house like just to get out my house I did not want to be at my house not from my children but the, um, my husband the lies I just wanted to be away and then with the alcohol and the party and like I could go and be with him and not sleep with him I wanted to I tried to but this guy he was gay he was hardcore he was not giving it up he did not want vagina he just was like no not at all so that kept the balance because I could never cross the line because I get to the line he would say no and that kept the balance so being with him I was able to be free and whatever and then he had a relationship so it was it was just it worked out and then um but then that girl came back and when she came back my whole life changed because to me she was the most beautiful thing i ever ever seen and um i was interested in her but lo and behold i had not known that she had a christian background as such as to a point that i had one as well in my mother's house we did go to church so i knew something about god i knew enough about God and what the Bible said and um, that's why it was so strong and heavy on me about what people said about being gay and uh, being homosexual and stuff like that because um, according to how it was taught in the Bible which is it was wrong so I was just like oh all these people you know all these family and Christians and everything they're just like oh this is wrong and then and not and even with my own conscience is what I felt it was within myself I felt it was wrong that's why I was it was such a secret and I had to keep the husband as the facade and you know the perfect home so that's that and then um she and then next time we just get together and then it's something in me like Christ in me the Holy Spirit was just coming alive it's like he was getting stronger and I was just like, oh my God. So every time I was around her, I began, and I didn't know church language and what people call prophecy now. 
and the future and events and word of knowledge I just didn't know the Holy Ghost and Jesus like that but it was in me and it was coming out because I had spent years reading the Bible and that word was in there now when I met her it became quickened and alive and those scriptures became real and things became stirred up with Jesus and I was just like oh my gosh and then um so anyway at the end of the day um I pursued her sexually and started a homosexual relationship with her and I was and with that I had um, also right before she came back and I began to we be, became um, friends befriended her I decided I was leaving my husband I just didn't know when and I was leaving him because I was lonely I was depressed um, I, I didn't feel love I didn't love the way I want to be loved I just didn't feel I was just tired of the rejection tired of the silence tired of every, everything that I was out there looking for in these different relationships, like the attention I wasn't getting at home, oh, I found it in the streets. The love, the passion, the appreciation, I found it in the streets because I wasn't getting it at home. Nothing, nada. And um, so at the end of the day, I pursued her and we ensued a relationship and she, you know, you know, you know, just the lesbian relationship so as I'd already programmed or, or seasoned in my mind that I was leaving my husband I I just I did mentally I was just living under the same roof we were literally we were living apart and then um so with her it became easy but then um then I started hanging her and everything and then at this straw just hubby wasn't taking no more he was just like no I'm you know like no you're not doing this so he was in the part where trying to pull me back and stop being with her and I was just no you know and I just kept playing it off downplaying it like no please it ain't nothing happening that hand please he had done seen it enough he knew and he was just like and he knew that I like girls oh come like that was not a secret in my house like well with him the children I kept it a secret but um so at the end of the day um, she, um, I, she helped me finally do the final leg and leave my husband, move out the house per se. I stayed with her then in a hotel. And then in the Navy, it was time to change um, locations, go to another place. So I was able to get away and out the house that way as well. My daughter was grown and my son was in um, 11th, senior, going to the senior year, 11th, 11th grade, senior year. And um, so you know self-sufficient it wasn't no more hip babies so everything was well so I went to the ship the Navy and you can't take your family with you anyway so you know I lived on the ship and life was good but when I left her that was in June 2014 um, we were together then July 4th 2014 I just let her know like look when I go to this ship which was that Friday, July 14th, July 4th, 2014, I was, this relationship was over. I didn't do long distance relationships. If I couldn't have you, touch you, feel you, see you, be with you, or run to you and hold you when I wanted to, I don't do long, I just didn't do long distance relationships. I need somebody there. Like, I, I just, I just, that was one thing I didn't do. Just, <laughs> Wanza wasn't a part of being in a long distance relationship. That wasn't going to happen. So, um, she was hours away. I, when I moved down to that ship, I, it was just, it wasn't, I didn't even want to know if it was going to work. I didn't want to try. It just wasn't going to happen. It wasn't even in the cards. It was in her cards. It just, it just wasn't in my cards. So, anyway, so, um, when I went down to, uh, the new ship, it was July 4, 2014, and I told God, because after being with her, we were just preaching and teaching and I mean it was just Jesus 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 and the still the homosexual side or the lesbian side and it was the relationship side but still Jesus 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 so um she taught me a lot of things brought a lot of scriptures out it just built me and gave me a foundation on the um word and the scripture that was already in me 
So when I got to that point, when I got to that ship, I was like, okay, God, you totally got me. No distractions. I'm not doing anything. I'm sold out and be faithful to God. No, no relationships. I'm just going to get on this ship, keep to myself, mind my own business, um, tell people about God. And that was it. That was on July 4th, 2014. <laughs> that was a Friday. Saturday came. Sunday came. Sunday is the day that changed my life. On Friday, I made this big, whole, long story to be with God for the rest of my life. And then on um, Sunday, I saw the most, another, you know, the most villainous girl I'd ever seen in my life. And I was like, oh my God, who is that? And she walked, and it was like the, the cafeteria part, the eating part, the mess decks on the ship. She walked, I was like, who is that? I ain't think about Jesus. Jesus was so far gone up to eat. <laughs> He's back in heaven by then, because I was like, oh my God, I forgot what I told Guy on, on just two days earlier. And I pursued her. That Monday, I mean, I sat. I just, I pushed my way into her life. I had just got on the ship, didn't know nobody, didn't know nothing. I, I didn't care my sight, so I was just like this, just like a horse. Like, I was just blinded. So, I pursued her, um, we started a relationship, and on the ship, you're confined, and then you're girls, and you're still living and sleeping in the same place. You can go into the, you can hang out together and not be, you know, your chain of command or your bosses, your management, your other co-workers. Nobody's going to say anything. Your girls, you're kicking it. They think you're friends. Yes, but I was pursuing her. I was, we were in, we were in a relationship. So, um, that was 2014, July. Fast forward, went on deployment, December 14. January, February, God started talking to me. And I started, my conscience was just like, you can't do this. And I was just like, okay, okay. Another couple of weeks go by, you can't do this. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Boy, I had the best time. I really enjoyed the relationship. It's my first full-blown um, girl-on-girl relationship. Like, nobody else. I was not I wanted to be faithful I tried but you know life is I did step out on with a man because being I just just then I was by at the time because that's what I'm gonna say right now because I'm a realist in but it's like I was um because I just after a while it's just like I need I just needed some penetration I just couldn't just just do what we were doing. I needed something, and I needed a chest, like a man chest. So, I, you know, I just stayed across the line. So anyway, I, I did um, go out on her, and um, and in doing, you know, life was, you know, there's no secret, you know. And then um, around June 2015, it just got stronger and stronger to God, God's voice and the pull towards um, being, you know, leaving her. And I was just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So um, I guess this turns into not really, yeah, answering questions, but telling my story. So anyway, so um, I actually, um, and, I, and, and, and then I was telling her, as I was saying these to myself and talking to God and, you know, getting close to God, and I was, you know, I was actually reading the Bible and talking to God and doing all this while still engaged in this relationship. Did God ever focus on the relationship? No. Did he ever pinpoint me, come down and beat me on the head with a hammer? No. Did he ever pressure me and make me cry? No. He didn't do any of those things. He, he just rose up sometimes like, you, you know, your relationship, you know, you, you can't do this. And I was just like, okay. And um, first of all, I'm still married, and um, so there's that. If we don't even pinpoint the fact that it was just a homosexual relationship, relationship I was still feeling an adulterer. So at the end of the day, I could have, you know, you, it's not just pinpoint on homosexuality. It was like, you know you're married. You know you can't do this. No, whatever the reason is or whatever, or who she is or who he is. So um, anyway, so I continued. June 2015 came, it got stronger, and I was just like, okay, I can't do this. And I would tell her that, which is selfish and rude to say, you know, I ain't going to be doing this forever. And um, then um, July came, August came, and um, and then I actually, like, got my feelings hurt with her. Like, 
and I was just like, oh my gosh, like it wasn't like sexual or anything like that. She just, I just hurt my feelings. Like I wanted more attention and I didn't get it. And then my feelings got hurt and my feelings got hurt and I stayed in that place and uh, rejection stirred up again and I got hurt and usually I get rejected. I'm running. I get hurt. I'm running. I'm out of there. And, um, and I fought that because I was like, oh, I don't really want to go, but I do. And then I said, no. I'm going to stay. I'm not going to leave her. I'm staying. I'm going to hell for her. That was how I was talking to that voice that I was hearing, which turned out to be God. But, um, and I was just like, oh my gosh, like, no, I'm going to hell. Like, I don't care if this, this is what I choose. This is good. I like it. I'm enjoying it. It's fun. She's not going anywhere. We like each other. We're girls. We can go to the bathroom together. We can hang out together. We can eat together. We can just hang out with best friends. We can sit close and act crazy. And people just think we're best friends, you know? Because another one, neither one of us were um, studs. We were both feminine. So, um, not that feminism, lesbianism, yes, but it just didn't raise flags. Like, it didn't, we wouldn't draw attention to us by our outward appearance just yelling that we were gay. It just, it, you know the difference. If you're watching this and you've been watching it this long, you know the difference. So, um, anyway, um, at the end, it was... August and we we have been living together mind you for a year living together for a year um, well we came over a year and um, we we're doing everything together inseparable inseparable like literally so anyway uh, at, at the end of the day I little said that um, when I got my little feelings hurt I tried to fight that rejection feeling and everything that comes up with rejection and then um, God got louder in that time. And at one point, two weeks before the sep final separation, God came to me and he said, I'm laughing, it looks like, but I'm crying. <laughs> I'm not crying, I'm just like, Jesus, that was a real, remembering that moment and the feelings, that's what just came up. So I'm not crying, but those emotions were just remembered. So... I was um, out of my own business, of course, and then God just speaks, and he says, do you love her? And I was like, what, huh? And I was like, yes. He was like, do you love her? And I said, yes. I said, I'm going to hell for her. I'm not leaving her. That's what I was telling God. And then he said, it's time. Like, it was, it's time. Two weeks later. And I'm going to say this, bring this video to a close, and I'll go into, I guess, answering the questions and everything about the deliverance and everything. Um, this is the deliverance. This, 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 this is the ending, this deliverance, but then I'll answer questions in a later video. Whew, two weeks later, um, we... I became, I was becoming drawn away. I didn't notice it. This is what she told me afterwards. And then when I look back, I kind of put it to together. But she was like... I became distant in those two weeks. I became more and more distant spiritually, meaning connection that we had, that pull, that connection that we had in a relationship as loving each other. And also physically, like I just, I was always tangible and being there looking at her, being two feet next to her. Like I always like to cling to the person. Like I'm always next to you in a relationship. Like I always got to be next to you, see you, be with you, in the room with you. Like I'm just so needy and clingy and girly. And then, um, um, so anyway, so I was like, I, I wasn't that type of person anymore. And then she began to do things on her end. Like if I didn't like something or wanted more or something from her, like her dressing up and wearing dresses and heels so we can be like divas walking down the street and we can, um, be the baddest women that walked in a room. That's what I wanted her to do to come up in that area and when she never really focused on it but then those two weeks boo boo she focused on it and she um and I noticed and then we went out to eat we did things that I wanted to do in a relationship she did those things she's just it was that season that time in my life everything was perfect we went out we did things we traveled it was fun um she set up things and do things she was very considerate and nice like like I thought you could only get from a woman so that's why I pursued and kept women in my life because those are the things the type of relationship and the attention that I got from women that I didn't get from men so um, 
but it wasn't because the men weren't out there it's because the ones I was choosing and that's another test that'll be in another video so anyway so um so those two weeks so at the end we came home from vacation one day and um I laid on the I laid we were laying in the bed going to bed and literally I was laying on the edge of the bed like I was running for her and it was a queen size bed <laughs> I was literally laying on the curve of the bed and I didn't realize it but um where I would usually be laying on her and she would run from me and couldn't get away from me now it was like I just didn't I wasn't the nights weren't the same anymore so this particular this last night she came and um uh, we were laying in bed going to sleep and I just turned my head toward her and I said I can't do this anymore and she said okay and I turned my head and I went to sleep like a baby like I usually sleep and um, she told me later she you know was wondering looking at me like how could I just turn over and go to sleep after saying something like that but she didn't bother me so that night went to sleep woke up the next day and we went to work that day when I came home there wasn't uh, I, I, something was strange I was driving home because we commuted separately well we did that day yeah we commuted so we went to work um, when we came uh, when I, I was driving home y'all and I knew something was strange I knew in my spirit it's like God had already let me know like he prepared me and I was driving I was driving I just couldn't drive that car fast enough when I whipped that car home and I walked through that door and I open that door her spirit wasn't there she wasn't there her car wasn't I was like nothing was there I knew it when I ran in that house nothing I ran around that place when I oh gosh the tears had come out of nowhere uh, but I was um when I hit when I came back I walked around because you could walk around the whole like the doors are linked and open so you can walk around so when I ended back up in the living room I started in the living room walked through kitchen everything bedroom bathroom came all the way back around to the front living room I fell on my face tears were coming and I was bawling and I fell on my face and fell on my knees and in that carpet and I just had my face down and I looked up and I point I looked up I look when I say I looked up I looked in heaven God himself I said you didn't even give me time to say goodbye and he said I gave you two weeks that's the God I serve he said I gave you two weeks and when he said that I got up off the floor those tears just miraculously just disappear I didn't have no pain no tears no nothing because when he said that all I did was say like you did now whether I saw him two weeks ago actually making that move I didn't but when he reminded me of that conversation that we had when he asked me are you know do you love her yes do you love her yes I'm going to hell for her <laughs> I'm gonna die for this be like and it was time like he was making his move and it took him two weeks and in that process to 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 to, I was pulling away. It was it was getting a lot of stuff out of me. Like I was already in a change. It was in a transformation. I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything. But in my spirit, in my heart, in my inner parts, like I was already not in a relationship anymore. I was already gone. I wasn't attached to her anymore. And that's what was happening over the last two weeks, over those two weeks that she noticed. I didn't notice. When God changed me, it was overnight, right at that conversation. And I had no idea, no idea none y'all because that's how God is that's how he moves that's how he does now did I go and say I had to fight with it and walk away or I did it myself I didn't do it myself I couldn't do it myself I couldn't God did it in an instant at that moment I tried to snap my fingers and it didn't happen so let me do it now there we go <laughs> so anyway God did that thing and when he did that thing it was done there was no more questioning because when she was gone and she was left it was over it was me and him and I was going strong and I was gung-ho and it was no stopping me but my point is God did it for me that's how I got my deliverance from homosexuality was I looking for it no he just cleaned it up himself he came in there and put himself in there where I was lonely and sad and weak and depressed he filled those voids how doing what God does how do you explain one day you're madly in love with this woman and the next you're not it's not out of not out of something you know she did or or no even though in July July August I say I got my feelings hurt just because I wanted more attention that wasn't enough that's like a baby whining 
All I had to do was say I wanted more attention, and I did. And she stepped up to the plate. She was like, okay, because she knew me by then. Okay, here she go. She needs some help. She needs some attention. She just stopped everything and catered to me. So she that was covered. That was covered. And we were going out. She was making me happy. We were doing things. It was a brilliant time in my life. However, when God came in and 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 removed that from me, what do you say? Can't go looking for it. Can't go pursue it. Can't go and try to put it back in there. Don't work. How do I put anything in my spirit? How do I do that? You can't do that. And I keep doing it like my heart. It was when it wasn't in my heart anymore. It was done. And so that's where my deliverance happened. That's how suddenly it was. It was instant. It was at a moment it was at a twinkling of an eye when God came in the same way he's coming back for for us it's the same way he delivered me the like I didn't have to wrestle or fight or anything this is my story this is my journey this is how it happened to me if it didn't happen like that for you to God be the glory you don't watch it this far don't don't get upset now that's how it happened for me God's love for me was subtle and in a way that I needed it and how he loves it's like he just took a spoon a fork and just dug in there and took out that homosexuality and did I ever go back to a woman as have I ever been with a woman that was in September 2015 she was leaving the country September October November November I had been with God those two months doing good, hadn't talked or really seen her, hadn't really seen her at all, haven't talked to her, we just cut it off, like, I'm telling you, when God come through, it's just a clean slate, you don't even know it even existed, like, I wasn't crying at home, I wasn't bawling, sad, missing her, I'm telling you, an angel came through that apartment, and not even a hair of hers was left in my apartment nothing well it was our apartment but nothing was left in that apartment I couldn't smell her oh I couldn't there were no moments of like I have the memories of her standing in the refrigerator or cooking or us sitting in or we we're eating at the table she was very very sweet and romantic I have those memories but there were no actual tangible feelings and emotions and memories during that time I just now remembered that right now. I hadn't even remembered those things about the cooking and the cleaning. I, the cooking and the eating and the things that she did around the house. I totally forgot about them until just now. So that's how far they've been gone from me. Those memories are just negated. They are gone. Wiped out. And I had nothing to dwell on is what I'm trying to say. When God came, the memories gone. Everything, the emotions, the feelings, that was the deliverance. There was no residue, nothing. So in November, she she was getting ready to leave and I was like oh my goodness if this is it what if I never know what if this what if that then I started to think about those things about how if I ever wanted to go back or be with her or see her so I did I did I went back one weekend she didn't know it at all and I knocked on her door and I spent the weekend with her um I didn't even go to church. I had been going to church, Bible study, everything. That Sunday, I didn't even go to church. And she knew I was in the church. Like, I went hard in the church. And, or, you know, with God, seeking God, and being led by the Holy Spirit. And she actually looked at me, and I'm going to end on this. She, we was, Sunday came. She looked at me, was laying there. She looked at me. I looked at her. And she finally said it. Are you going to go to church? Do you want me to go to church? I know it's church time. Why are you bringing it up? You know, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm saved now. I know. <laughs> but I'm telling you, that monkey in the room just, you know, it spoke. It was just like, you going to church? I know. I was like... Oh my goodness. So that was that. And I was it was to the point where now I got to, you know, I don't want the pressure on me anymore. So I tried to put it back on her, which was a selfish thing. Like, do you want me to go? No, she didn't want me to go. I didn't have to play the game. I didn't have to ask her back. I didn't. It was understood. But that those two few those few seconds came and gone. And then we spent the rest of the time. Then the next met Monday. I had to get up and go to work. We both did. We went to work and I've never seen her since. Never seen her since. So um, was it a way, it was a good thing, 
it helped me because knowing she was gone away, there was no desire, no ride around the corner, no drive from state to state, no hopping to pump, bump into her. No, it wasn't going to happen like that. Why? Because she was miles, million, million miles away, thousands of miles away. So um, that's my testimony. That's my journey. That's how God delivered me. There was no, there was no processing. It became instant. And I thank God for it. And thank God for watching this video. Again, my name is Alawamza. You can find me socializing everywhere on, what is it, Facebook, Instagram, Adam Graham, and TikTok. And of course, you found me here on uh, YouTube. Also, my site, alawamzabrooks.com. I love you guys. And um, I'm never out of word. I'm never out of testimonies. But um, as the grace that's upon my life, and if you too would love to be delivered from homosexuality for whatever reasons or a relationship that you are not comfortable in, as you listen to this story, be delivered. And as God delivered me, and he took everything away. When you realize that it's all gone, don't go chasing it. Don't go looking for it. It's over. God did it. Give him all the glory. Tell him, thank you, Jesus. Give him all the glory. And, it, and just know that it's the grace. Jesus Christ is grace. He forgives you. Forgive yourself and move on. So I love you guys. And until the next testimony and the next video, which I probably will get to these questions, then until then, I love you guys. Bye. I walked in, ran around, fell on my face, and looked up.